So um, now I'd like to introduce you to um, Catherine Pinto, who's going to talk about um, coping and living well with MND. My name is Catherine. I'm a PhD researcher at the University of Southampton. I will be talking about my PhD research, which is looking to develop an online or digital intervention to reduce emotional distress for people with MND and their family members. The psychological impact of having MND can be huge, ranging from things like anxiety and depression to issues with adjusting to changes and symptoms. And the emotional side is really important because it can undermine quality of life. There has been some research into psychological therapies and interventions, but a lot more work needs to be done to understand what interventions are effective for this population. So I'm looking to develop an online intervention to provide some psychological support. And we chose this format because it would be easy to use with people who have varying levels of disability and also in cases where accessing psychological therapy may be difficult. This of course doesn't take the place of face-to-face -face therapy and some people will always prefer talking to someone face-to-face. -face. This is just another avenue of support that people can use if they feel stuck and want to try something out in a more self-help format. We also used an approach called the person-based approach, which basically involves using qualitative research methods to understand the views of people who will be using the intervention at the different stages of developing the intervention. So this is an overview of the project. I started out by doing in-depth interviews with people with MND and their family members mainly about their experiences of emotional distress and well-being. And I will be talking about this study in a bit more depth in this presentation. I also um, reviewed literature about people's experiences of using interventions and then pulled all these findings together to design the intervention. And I'm currently evaluating the intervention, trying to see how people respond to it and what they feel about actually using it. In my first study, I interviewed 25 people with MND and 10 family members. We managed to get quite a representative sample, including people who had been recently diagnosed and those who had MND for years. We also included people who couldn't speak and took part in written interviews. So we were able to get a good picture of people's emotional experiences at different stages of MND and with people who had a variety of symptoms. So these were our main findings. We identified four main themes that relate to emotional distress and four main themes that relate to emotional well-being. I won't go into too much detail about the themes related to emotional distress because I think most of you work in this field and are probably already aware of the issues that people face. But if you have any questions about the themes about emotional distress, I'd be happy to take them. I wanted to focus on the strategies that people used to improve emotional well-being because I felt that this was the area that I could learn the most from and actually apply as a healthcare professional. An important strategy people used was to look for hope and positivity, even if this was not found in terms of, say, medication or finding a cure. Having some options was really important and linked to hope. For example, the person in this quote says, You always want to think you have options, got somewhere to go, because at that point where you think, well, I've got nowhere left to go with this, that's when you may sort of deteriorate and let it get the best of you. The person goes on to say how options for him was taking part in research and doing some physiotherapy. 
Some people also find hope by continuing to do activities that are meaningful to them and also continuing to focus on the positive. And the key thing is to have something to look forward to. This doesn't have to be something big. It can be little things like normal activities, spending time with family, having a weekend away. But having something to look forward to was linked to this need to maintain hope. Especially in a disease like MND, where control has been taken away, exerting some level of control over things was really important for people. For some, this was about control over how they live, so doing tasks independently or trying to maintain a normal routine. But for some people, this control was about the approach they took. So some people prefer to focus on the present moment and what they could control rather than thinking about the future and what might happen or how they would manage. Some people also exerted this control by actively making decisions about their treatment and care. And I think the important message for us is that a sense of control was important for everyone even though people may express this differently. For example, some people may want information about the future, whereas some people actively avoid thinking about the future and wanting that information. But at the bottom of all of this, a sense of control is important. Another thing people mentioned in the interviews was that it was important to find a way to also be kind to yourself. For some people, especially family members, this meant taking a break from caring tasks. For people with MND, this would mean spending certain periods where you avoid information about MND. Sometimes being kinder to yourself also meant changing expectations of what could be done. So for example, the person in this quote says, I let my body do the talking and I was advised as well by the OT lady saying, you can't work an eight hour day anymore because you'll be exhausted at the end of it. So work an hour or two, have half an hour break, especially when working from home. So I go and sit on the bed and sort of just chill for half an hour till my hands and everything sort of go back to normal and carry on with it. So sometimes just giving people the permission to almost take a step back and be kinder to themselves was also really useful. Support and compassion from other people was also really important in terms of emotional well-being. In terms of care, particularly depending on the care that people receive was important. The person in the first quote talks about how getting equipment in on time was important and helped them feel confident in the care they receive. Empathy from other people, whether from other healthcare professionals or other people with MND, also went a long way in terms of improving emotional well-being. So overall, the key things that were important for well-being were hope and positivity, a sense of control and compassion, both self-compassion and self-kindness and compassion from other people. And it's important to keep these three factors in mind and I will now show you how I use this in developing my own intervention. So the findings influenced both what went into my intervention as well as how I designed my intervention. The first thing I had to bear in mind was that the intervention had to be framed in a way that was positive and empowering. So less of an emphasis on the problems and more on what could be done and what support people could get. I also tried not to be too confronting about the future or what may happen. The online intervention also has a section on building positivity and meaning. And I think this shift of focus away from ability and what people can and can't do to what is meaningful for them was really important. The online intervention also has different sections and no set set of sessions 
that people have to go through. So this gives people the ability to choose what they would like to look at and what techniques they would like to use. And this was important to accommodate people with different coping preferences and also people at different stages of MND. For the intervention, I also use approaches from mindfulness and self-compassion therapy. And again, this was based directly from the findings of my qualitative interview study. So I'm just going to show you a couple of pages from the online intervention. This is the home page where people can choose from three sections, building positivity and meaning, adjusting to changes and dealing with worry and stress based on how they are feeling at the time. If someone has a particular technique that they really liked or that worked for them before, then they can access this technique directly from the all technique section. Each section then is broken down into different activities and bits of information. So for example, you can see the positivity and meaning section has uh, three activities, pleasant activities, benefit finding and values and goals. So people can use this intervention almost in a preventative way to stay positive and pay attention to their mental health. But you could also use this intervention if you were experiencing difficult emotions. For example, um, the other page is about dealing with anger. And I present a suggested technique as well as practical tips. So people who have different coping preferences can find something that's useful within that section. We've also developed this intervention with lots of support from our patient and public involvement members whose photographs you can see on the screen. And we're now at the stage where we are doing some research to try and test the acceptability of this intervention and get feedback from people with MND and their family members. So I've put my contact details on the screen if you'd like any more information about the study or about the intervention. And also, if you have any ideas or suggestions of how to best use an intervention like this in combination with the usual care that people receive, I'd love to hear from you. So please feel free to comment, ask questions. I'd also want to thank the MNDA for supporting this study and thank you so much for listening. All right. Thank you so much, Catherine. That was really, really interesting. Um, there are a few questions in the in the chat. Um, one is Jackie's asking, is this kind of available to other professionals and can they can they access um, this yet? moment it's still being tested um we've only just developed it so i'm keen to get feedback from people about whether it's useful and how they've actually used it um but eventually yes that that's the aim to um implement it and get professionals as well using it with people oh that's really interesting and i like um the thought I mean, about mindfulness and being in the in the um, present and control and being kind of having that control. Do you think actual mindfulness techniques and teaching can help enhance that control? Yeah. Um, so the actual website has a couple of these exercises to um, teach people mindfulness, um, but sometimes it doesn't have to be. Uh, doing an actual meditation as well. A lot of people spoke about just having uh, a mindful approach to life and how they do their daily tasks. And I'm sure that's something um, even healthcare professionals can teach people without actually maybe doing a whole uh, meditation session or something like that. Yeah, that's really that's really helpful. Thank you. And I think it's very timely that you should be um, looking at something online <laughs> because yeah. 
I mean, from from now anyway, that the paper we're relying more and more on virtual therapies, and we find them very, you know, people um, find them very accessible too. So that's um, that's interesting, and I suppose that's uh, yeah, an extra added bonus to your to your work. I'll just see if there's any other questions. Um, people are really saying an excellent presentation, and thank you. Um, and yes, the website um, would be useful. I think you've given the, your contact details in the presentation. But if you could possibly add your contact details to the chat, then um, people will find them available. If Thank that's you. Okay. I think I in. Um, that's yeah. lovely. Are there any other questions for, uh, for Catherine? Yeah. No, they're, people are basically thanking you for that for their presentation. So thank you very much, uh, Catherine. That was really interesting. Thank you. Thank you.